reminded in a prophetic statement in Isaiah chapter 9 of several gifts, the gift of a child born, the gift of a son given, and the many names that he would be called to appeal to our every need. Today we commemorate those gifts as we join together in worship and in celebration of the true reason for the season. Let us pray. Almighty God, your great love and compassion has come into our world, the person in the person of your incarnate Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us grace to celebrate the birth of our Lord. This Christmas morning, may our hearts join with the angels in singing praises to the newborn King. May our mouths join with the shepherds in testifying that the Savior of the world has come. May our whole being join with the wise men in bringing our best worship to thee. This Christmas morning, may we be filled with gladness and deep gratitude that the Almighty God is here. Emmanuel, the Lord is with us. Amen. The New Testament scripture is from Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The New Testament scripture is Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 18. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, 
a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. This is the word of God. Please join me in the reading the in reading the litany responsively. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the king of kings. May the light of Christ ignite our hearts and shine out brightly from our lives, proclaiming your salvation to all the earth. May the light of God shine on us. May the love of Christ shine in us. May the life of the Spirit shine through us this day and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, on this Christmas morning, as the light of your word illuminates our hearts, as our hearts receive the gift of life and faith, as our voices echo the resounding praise of heavenly hosts, we open ourselves up to your Holy Spirit and give you thanks. Just as the disciples declared to each other, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph, Jesus, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, the Lord Jesus Christ is here. As we rejoice in your coming, we are mindful of those who are hurting in our midst. Oh God, we bring our bereaved before you and ask that you dry the tears from their eyes and comfort every sorrowful heart. Juliet and Mark Spivey, Floyd and Sheila Wolf, Angeline Richardson, Felton and Stephanie Houston, Britchery and Obi Ridley, the family of Ramonica Yvette Shachery, Norman and Sharon Henderson III, the family of Brenda Suttle. Oh God, we ask that you provide for every need, bringing light to every darkness. Heal every hurt and make a way out of no way for your people. Gracious God, thank you for our pastor, Ralph Douglas West, Sister Sharia West and their family. We pray a blessing and protection over them. We pray for our church leadership, staff, congregation, first time friends and guests. Holy Spirit, enter every heart and unwrap a new gift of life and love in Christ our Lord. This we ask in the name of Jesus, amen.
Good morning, Church Without Walls. Good morning. Today is Christmas. Christ's light has come into a dark world. Why is the birth of Christ so important to us today? Jesus comes to give hope to the hopeless and faith to the doubting. He is the center of our joy. And Christ gives us peace in the midst of chaos and confusion. Christ, the Messiah, has come. The first purple candle represents hope. The second purple candle represents peace. The pink candle represents joy. And the last purple is the candle of love. Today, the Michael family will light the candle, the white candle in the center, the Christ candle. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. While you are standing, amen, I hope you got your Christmas vocal cords ready and y'all are ready to join in with us with the great hymn of the church, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hallelujah.
holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. You may be seated. Please help me welcome our first time friends and guests. First time friends, if you have joined us today, would you please just raise your hand real high so that we may see where you are. Amen. Thank you so much for visiting us with us here at the Church Without Walls. And we invite you to join our welcome team immediately following the invocation, the invitation by texting the number on the screen. We would love to meet you and answer any questions that you may have. We would also like to welcome those of you who are streaming with us today, our e-service attendees. Welcome, streaming congregation. We welcome all of those who have joined us virtually as far from away as the Bahamas, Costa Rica, Mexico, Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, and Ireland. Welcome, streaming congregation. For those of us who are worshiping together, we encourage each other to continue to invite someone to join this wonderful worship experience. Amen. We want to celebrate with those who have entered the covenant of marriage and are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. We want to say happy anniversary to Kurt and Gloria Holloway, 28 years. Terry and Soraya Hawkins, 29 years. Gary and Lily Flanoy, 31 years. Crawford and Anita Bunkley, 36 years. And Clinton and Sheila Malone, 49 years. Amen. So, upcoming week, we have some exciting worship services ahead of us. So let's plan on gathering together as a family and giving God thanks for this year on December 31st at our New Year's Eve services, 12 p.m. on the Queenston campus and 2 p.m. right here on our Eldridge campus. Amen. And then Let's bring in the new year together, Sunday, January 1st, as we worship and celebrate the first Lord's Supper of the new year. 10 a.m., Bingle in Queenston, and 11 a.m., right here at Eldridge. Amen? Peace be unto you.
Good morning and Merry Christmas again, everybody. For you this morning, we have the wonderful pleasure of welcoming our own Ernest Pugh. Amen. Amen. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. How many are going to rejoice and be glad that Jesus has shown up the reason for the season? Amen. But aren't you glad we serve a God that keeps us January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all the way the year, all the way through the year. Amen. Great is his faithfulness. One of my greatest gifts, Kenny, is the one and the only Dr. Ralph Douglas West. Come on, the whole first family. Go crazy for our leader, the one who feeds and leads us. Amen. And give my little brother a hand, Kenny. He's looking kind of like he's younger than me. Y'all give God praise for our minister of arts. Come on. Today I have the blessed privilege of just uh, describing to you what the night that Jesus Christ was born looked like. Hallelujah. shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth oh long lay the world in sin and repining till he appeared and the soul fell Night. If I could describe the night, I would say, because I know the town people, they rejoiced when they saw the star. But when they saw the baby Jesus, all they could do was say, we give you all the glory. Let's say that again. We give you all. We give you all. Come on, church. Worship, come on, lift that hand and tell them, we give you the glory. Oh, when we behold your glory, one more time, we give you oh, when we behold your glory, we worship you. Come on, we worship you. Say, 
this room. You are worthy to be praised. Help me sing. You are. You are worthy to be praised. I've searched all over, but I couldn't find nobody like you. Nobody so holy. Nobody so righteous. You are the king. You. us this morning. Let's give Ernest a hand clap of appreciation. If you will, family, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. I can't wait to brag to everybody to tell them I said, everybody showed up to church on Christmas on Sunday. <laughs> Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, when you have it, say amen. amen. The word of God says this, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated, God with us. This is the word of God. Be you may be seated. I want to tag this text this morning, the present of presence. The present of presence. Names really matter, don't they? One of my favorite artists, Johnny Cash, known for his dressed in all black, wrote an interesting song called A Boy Named Sue. The song was about a father who anticipated being absent, so he gave his son the name Sue after a girl a feminine name, because he knew growing up during that time when other boys heard his name, he was going to be in continuous scuffles. So he gave him the name Sue because he knew it was going to teach him how to fight. <laughs> Names are important. Our African ancestors, when they named their children, they would name them after someone of prominence. So whenever they heard their names, they heard their possibilities and their potential. And they would hear it on a daily basis. After our ancestors were kidnapped and brought to the North American lands, one of the systematic moves to degrading and dehumanizing them was, one, taking them away from their family, it took them away from their history, they snatched them away from their land, it separated them from their culture, but they took them away from their names because it snatched them away from their identity. <laughs> names give identity, history, and destiny, and we know names are important. 
So much so God concealed his name throughout the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Abraham asked his name and said, he said, Abraham, I'm your shield. And Abraham's grandson, Jacob, one night wrestled with an angel and asked, what's your name? And that angel changed his name to Israel. Then Moses, on the backside of a desert, in the book of Exodus, would see a burning bush on fire, but it doesn't burn up. And he asks, after he's received directions from this burning bush to go deliver the Hebrews, he asks, who do I say sent me? And that voice, the voice of God, reveals his name, I am that I am. But then Moses would point to that name and says there would be one that would be a great prophet. Isaiah speaks of the names of God in Isaiah 9 and 6 and says that he would be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Isaiah would also say that his name, of his name is that he's a suffering servant, the wounded healer. It's been documented, documented that throughout Scripture, there are 365 names attributed to God. As if to say that for every day of the year, there's a name you can call. When I read that, I got excited because I'm glad to know that every day, <laughs> any time of day, there's a name and a God I can call. But in the opening book of Matthew's gospel, the first chapter, we have a name that all others fall under that umbrella. It was given to a peasant teenage girl with no pedigree, no prominence, no nobility, and in a place of obscurity, Mary in a tiny town called Bethlehem. She would encounter the messenger of God and hear God's message through the lips of his messenger that this virgin, you, would bear a son. You would call him Emmanuel. Translated, God is with us. Have you ever noticed how time always passes away? Everyday time is ticking away, but we don't notice it until we look at our watch. In the like manner, God is Emmanuel all day, every day, all year, every month of the year. But strangely enough, it isn't until the clock or the calendar strikes December are we reminded that his name is Emmanuel. God is with us. What does that mean? Just for a few moments, let me just turn that phrase around. God. In the Old Testament, God is viewed as holy, separate, holy other. And as we try to understand God, we see the awful gap between man and God because of our sin. But the awesome nature of his name illuminates for us that God is as he really is, is as different from me as I really am. Listen to it. I mean, think about it. God, he is eternal. He is all-powerful. He's invisible. He is holy. He is sinless. And as we look at who he is, it points to us and our differences as who we really are. God is eternal, but I am finite. He is all powerful. I am impotent and weak. He's invisible, but I am visible. He is holy. I am in my sin. He is sinless and I am sinful. God, that is his majesty, but with us is his mercy. God, that is his greatness, but with us, that is his graciousness. The eternal God has come 
down to our little moment. I love how the 90th Psalm documents it. He says, before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, everlasting to everlasting, you are God. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it has passed and like a watch in the night. I was humored when I was looking at last year's discovery on CNN. An amateur paleontologist in Queensland, Australia uncovered a rare marine reptile skeleton that would provide valuable clues about prehistoric life. And the bones are predicted to be more than 100 million years old. When I read that, I could hear Jesus saying before Abraham was, I am. John would say, in the beginning was the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Emmanuel. God is with us. And the comfort in that name is that he's a God with us, a word of comfort that he is a God to all people. You see, in your scriptures, when you see Emmanuel, it says, translated, God is with us. This is written in Hebrew, only, and only a Hebrew would translate it this way. But he's a God of all people. We would miss that if we read it too quickly when he says, God with us. You remember on Calvary, the description given to our Lord, this is the king of the Jews written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Hebrew for the Jews. Latin for the intellectuals. Greek for the common man to show us that God he is with us, he is near us, but more importantly, he is sharing with us. Irenaeus, the great Christian in Gaul, known as France right now, gave a comforting word to the persecuted Christians. I want to share with you this morning. Be of good cheer, God is with us. The Lord Christ came as an infant that he may redeem infants. He came as a boy that he might redeem boys. He came as a youth to redeem youth. And he became a man that he might redeem man. The God that is with us is near us and is sharing with us. So if you fear the deathbed, remember he died on the cross. If you fear the grave, remember he was put in a grave and conquered the grave. If you labor, remember he was a carpenter and labored as well. If you thirst, remember on the cross he said, I thirst. If you are hungry, remember he fasted as well. If you cry, remember at the death of Lazarus, he wept. He cried at the tomb of Lazarus. What that means that God is with us, God as he really is is with us as we really are. An oriental monarch was on his deathbed and he tells his cabinet members that his son would be the next king. In the nation's custom, the people never saw their ruler. He remained hidden from their sight, almost godlike. But then injustice swept the land and the people were demanding, we want to see our king. And they were about to invade the palace. The people who never saw him, they never saw him. They looked up and they would see rising out of the palace, the young king dressed in royal and regal robes. And as they looked at him, they never saw him. And you heard in the crowd in one corner screaming out, when my baby died, he came to see me, but I didn't know it was him. Another one screamed out from another corner and said, when I was sick, he came to visit me, 
but I didn't know him. Another from the crowd said, when I was in prison, he came to visit me, but I didn't know it was him. But don't you know on a higher, heavier, holier level, the good news and the good word of Emmanuel is that when our faith becomes sight, when we see him as he is, we will say, he is the one who is with me. What it says to us, and I'm done with the sermon now, (laughs) is that God is now here approachable. An atheist teacher was in a room filled with students and wrote on the blackboard and said, God is nowhere. (laughs) Students were disheartened. One of the students got up from their seat, grabbed the chalkboard, and sliced a line through the word. And now it says, God is now here. That is the good news for us when we hear Emmanuel all year long. God is now here. And because he is now here, he is approachable for us. See, in the Old Testament, God seems so distant. In the Garden of Eden, there's angels with fiery swords. Who wants to approach that? Then you have Mount Sinai. Anybody that would touch the mountain would die. You have the Temple of Solomon where the glory of God filled the temple that no one dared go in. And David, when he brought back the ark on the cart, Uzzah touched it and died. On Christmas, we celebrate that God is not there. God is with us. Not an angel, but an infant. Not a king, but a baby. Not in a palace, but a manger. Not in a mega metropolitan city, but in a tiny town called Bethlehem. You ever notice how men demonstrate how unapproachable they are? The president of the United States, secret service guards, millionaires, Surrounded by gates, people with popularity or prominence, surrounded by an entourage. But God doesn't demonstrate his greatness by being unapproachable, but by how approachable he is. And the great mystery of God with us is this, is that he is still rejected by us. That's the great mystery of God being with us. He is still rejected by us. He came to his own town, and his own received him not. Born in a barn because there was no room in the inn. Rejected by the religious elite. Rejected by the political powers of Rome. The people cried out, Hosanna! A week later, they said, crucify him. At the cross, everyone left him but one. And in the last book of Scripture, Revelation 3.20, Jesus is outside of his own church knocking to come in. The question we must answer on this Christmas, not is that God is with us, but is he God with you? It's not enough to say God is with us. Christmas asks the question, is he God with you? I want to open up the doors of the church with those very words. When there's room in my life, you can say, God is with me. We want to open up the doors of the church this morning on this Christmas day. We celebrate that name, Emmanuel, God is with us. But before we depart, we want to answer that question if you've never settled it before. You can't say, all you can say is God is with us, but we want to give this first invitation. Can you say, God is with me? How do I say that? When you say, Lord Christ, I make room 
in my life for you to come in. That's our first invitation. Our second invitation is for anyone here who said, you know what, I've strayed away from the faith. I don't read scripture like I should. I don't come to church like I ought to. I need to. But I'm trying to get all of my affairs together. Listen, if you're trying to get yourself together by yourself, you will never get it together. But the good news is that the Lord says, I am the God that is with you. And he also, in this same gospel, the way he begin it, when he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He says that knowing there's a great chance we might leave or forsake him. So that second invitation is for you to come back to Christ, the one who never left. Third invitation. Maybe you hear you saying, you know, I'm a Christian, but I don't have a church home. You already know if it's right to be in the church, it's wrong to be outside of the church. So if a fish cannot survive outside of water, a believer cannot survive nor thrive separated and isolated from the body of Christ. So if that's you here, our leaders are standing, the choir is going to sing. We want to encourage you to do just two things. Get up from your seat and walk down the aisle because the Lord that is with us is waiting on you. Come on, let's encourage our sister family. Now, if I don't do this, I'll get in a whole lot of trouble and get some angry emails. Listen, someone else is here right now. You know the Lord is speaking to you. Now, you might be in a tug of war right now, but look, I don't have to open up the Bible to show you that tomorrow is not promised. Now, listen, I'm a firm believer that one of the great tools of the enemy is to tell us to wait. Maybe someone is here saying, you know, let me wait until watch noon service. <laughs> let me wait until first Sunday. Listen, the Lord is saying, why would you want to negotiate your tomorrow in an unpredictable world when I'm trying to secure your today right now? So do me a favor. Put on your big Christmas smile. Come on. And look to your left and right. Just nudge somebody. Is the Lord waiting on you? I can't walk for you, but I'd love to walk with you.
on, let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. How you doing, man? What's your name? Nick. Nikki, welcome to the Church Without Walls Eldridge Campus. Welcome. How you doing, ma'am? What's your name? Miss Lola? Welcome to the Church Without Walls family. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Jeremiah. Brother Jeremiah. Oh, the weeping prophet. Welcome to the Church Without Walls family. Family, if you would, extend your arms in that direction. Let's go to God together as a family in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for our brother and our sisters responding to your invitation. And Lord, we celebrate with all of heaven because they are now a part of the family. And Lord, we ask that you would show them the gifts that you've placed inside of them to do their part in uplifting your kingdom. And Lord, remind them and us they're no longer friends, but now family. And because they're now family, they are part of the body of Christ. And now a part of the body of Christ, we travel down this road called life together. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. We want to give you glory, honor, and praise right now for what you're about to do. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, let the church say together, amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. If you will follow our leaders, follow our leaders this way. Come on, let's encourage them, family. Amen. Amen. All right. What time is it? It ain't, it, hey, look, it ain't even noon. <laughs> so listen, let's prepare to worship the Lord through our thanksgiving because God loves a what a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. As you heard already in the announcement, I want to encourage you all to be here at 2 p.m. for our, it's called watch night, but I'm tempted, I just want to call it watch noon service, but the 2 o'clock service. Uh, as we go into the new year on Saturday, I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Let's go ahead and end this year off right with a bang. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's lift our gifts together to the Lord. And let's say it together. Where there's a temple, there's a need. Where there's a need, there's provision. Where there's provision, there's God. And where there's God, he shall supply in miraculous ways. It's offering time. Merry Christmas, church family. I hope this day and many others to come are wonderful for you and your family. Here are some announcements. New Year's Eve is always special at the Church Without Walls, and this year we have two special services planned. Join us at the Queenston campus on Saturday, December 31st at 12 noon, or at the Eldridge campus at 2 p.m. It'll be an exciting time filled with worship and praises as we prepare to bring in the new year. Then on Sunday, New Year's Day, we will worship together at each campus with one service. Join us January 1st at 10 a.m. on the Queenston or Bengal campus or 11 a.m. at the Eldridge campus.
At the beginning of worship, we ask that all first time friends and visitors please stand up. And at the conclusion of worship, we want to do the same thing again, but this time we want to give you something to let you know how much we appreciate you worshiping with us. So all first time friends and visitors, please stand if you will. Oh, there's another and another another. Oh, come on, church. We'll give them a hand clap of encouragement. If you all will, could you please go out in the aisles toward our leaders? Come on, let's encourage them, family. There's another out back there. Oh, and another in the back and another. Come on, let's encourage them, church. I'll be back there to speak with you shortly. But I just want to steal this from American Airlines. You could have flown with anybody. Thank you for flying with us. Amen. Come on, church. Let's stand together. Man, look at the t It's not even noon. My goodness. My goodness. Lord have mercy. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, in a few days as we exit this year and go into a new year. I'm really, really, really excited about what God is doing with the Church Without Walls and what God is doing specifically on this campus. And we have a few things to unveil toward, to you all and I, I can't wait uh, to see uh, your response. Uh, great things are expected from us because the Word of God says, to whom much is given, much is required. So let me bless you before we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. When you rise up early and settle late, in your labor, in your leisure, in your laughter, and in your tears, until that day when we shall stand at the feet of Jesus, where there's no sunrise or sunset. God bless you. Be encouraged. And Merry Christmas. Thank you.